show me an application that doesn't need high power solid state switching. Oh, I'll wait. Okay, maybe there are some out there, but there are more and more applications that need reliable, low power, fast switching solutions. So, what are our options? First, mechanical relays. Yeah, okay, but they can be costly over time because they are rather prone to reliability issues. Photovoltaic switches. Sure, but they do have high power dissipation and do require heat sinks. So, what are we left with? A brand new kind of coreless transformer-based isolators that are a game changer for speed and reliability for high power solid state switching. And as you probably guessed, that's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Daniel Cullen Jr. from Infineon and I explore trends in solid state isolator and relay solutions. The benefits that Infineon's SSI solutions bring to the table and how you can get started using these solutions for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Daniel. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. It's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about solid state isolators and how they can provide game changing reliability and speed for high power solid state switching today. But Daniel, before we get started, can you give us a brief overview of solid state isolators and relays? Yeah, sure. If you look at what's in the market today, a lot of applications use what are called electromagnetic relays. And they're a legacy solution, they're proven in use, but they have known reliability issues. They are mechanical switches, so they actually have contacts that are moving parts that can break or degrade over time. They also actually have a high cost of ownership. So if you can think about being in an environment that's either remote or a manufacturing environment where uptime is critical, if one of those breaks, maintenance costs can be quite high and the loss of throughput could also be quite high. So a lot of companies are replacing electromagnetic relays with solid state relays. And on the market today are what are called optical based solid state relays. They have faster switching. They are higher reliability, but in many cases, they have higher power dissipation due to the fact that they use switches that are SCR and triax, which are very power hungry, if you will, and often require a heat sink. We do have some of those products in our portfolio today, but what we're talking about is our new cordless transformer energy transfer SSR. So basically, we have released five different products that provide energy transfer over the isolation barrier through a coreless transformer. That energy transfer actually eliminates the need for an isolated power supply on the output, much faster switching than optical solutions. But they also have an integrated protection features. We have overcurrent and over temperature capability, as well as what's called a Miller clamp. The Miller clamp actually prevents inadvertent switch turn on in a noisy environment. They also can drive our latest generation MOSFETs. So they have much low power dissipation, up to 80% less than a typical photovoltaic and SCR triac. Therefore, they need no or a much smaller heat sink required. We've announced a set of products that are meant to replace the current solid state relays that are in place, as well as electromagnetic relays. Okay, cool. Now, Daniel, can we take a closer look at these new solid state isolators and relays? Absolutely. Let's say that what we are releasing is the isolator side, which combined with a MOSFET or IGPT are the building blocks of a solid state relay. So the solid state relay is essentially comprised of the isolator that can be realized in multiple technologies such as photovoltaic, capacitance, and magnetic coupling. 
In the case of Infineon's latest technology, we're using magnetic coupling through Infineon's cordless transformer, which has the ability to transfer signal and energy over the isolation barrier, and again, eliminating the need for an additional power supply on the isolated side. The SSI family has been specifically designed to drive Infineon's latest generation switches, including CoolMOS S7, as well as our IGPT and OptiMOS products. So, Daniel, what can this new SSI really do? What kind of capability are we talking about here? Yeah, so essentially what we're bringing to the table is a broad capability in terms of operating different types of switches effectively. So, for example, in our current photovoltaic isolator products, we can drive up to actually 1,000 volts, but at a much lower current range, only about 4 or 5 amps. The ISSI, however, has the capability to drive multiple families of switches 1,000 volts up to 30 amps or even 300 amps at around 100 volts. So it's a very broad capability. We're able to transfer energy across the isolation barrier, which gives us the ability to drive a broad range of our low RDS on switches that we are well known for and world class. So overall, what do you think are the biggest benefits of Infineon's SSI solutions? That's a great question, uh, Amelia. I've actually been talking to a lot of customers, and one of the things that I really like to bring to light is what we call total cost of ownership. What happens in an application environment, those mechanical relays can actually break, the switches can break, and if you're in a manufacturing environment or even a remote location, if you have a high-use application where the switch is turning on and off you know, multiple times, those relays can break. And what we have brought to the table is a much higher reliable product, up to 100 times more reliable than the current electromagnetic relays that are on the plate. That gives you a much lower total cost of ownership because there's no breakdown in your manufacturing. You don't have to stop and do the maintenance and, and all that stuff. So it's one of the things I've really been talking about is for customers to use the entire cost of the board and the cost of the lifetime of the product to really look at their costs, not just the ASP itself. The other thing that this family brings to the table is integrated switch protection. So we have in this family, all five variants have the ability to select between different protection devices. So some have over temperature protection. We also have the Miller clamp feature, which enables filtering so that you don't get into an inadvertent switch situation in a noisy environment. Um, and then we also have a fast turn on capability with the external capacitor. In environmental conditions, there's EMI noise immunity. There's no arcing in harsh environments. So if you think about being in a gas environment, for example, and, and an electromagnetic switch can actually arc, solid-state relays don't do that. There's also no clicking noise when they turn on and off. So if you've ever been in a manufacturing environment where you have hundreds of electromagnetic relays turning on and off, it can be quite noisy and quite annoying, let's put it that way. From a performance perspective, these products have faster switching, so much higher number of switches, switching operations per minute. There's no bounce. There's no degradation in DC switching. Sometimes you get a situation in an electromagnetic relay where contacts can actually weld through a DC current, and that's not possible in a solid-state relay. These products require very little input power to switch strong power loads, so you can actually switch these on with the output of a microcontroller and then enough energy is accumulated to go across the barrier and switch our very low RDS on products. And since a relay doesn't have to energize a coil and physically open and close, it actually consumes 75% less power than an electromagnetic relay. They are designed specifically for Infineon's world-class, which is IG IGBT, OptiMOS, and ULMOS S7s. So, Daniel, can we also talk in a bit more depth about the Infineon solutions here? Yeah, sure. So we've actually released five different variants to the market, three of which are 8-pin, and the other two variants are 16-pin. All five variants are in 300 mil packages, and they have the same isolation voltage capability up to 5.7 kilovolts RMS, which is 8,000 volts peak. The two 8-pin devices... The RO2 and RO3H devices only differ by features that they provide. So they're an 8-pin device. 
And the, our RO2 enables the use of a Miller clamp in applications where noise could enable accidental switch turn on, as well as the choice of either over temperature or over current protection. Our RO3H eliminates the Miller clamp for applications where it may not be needed, but it also adds the ability to use both the overcurrent and over temperature protection features. Our last 8-pin device is our 2OR11H product. And what it has is the fast turn-on feature. Basically what happens is there's an external buffer cap and the capacitor is actually charged by the energy that's transferred from the non-isolated side. So when the energy is being transferred across the isolation barrier, it actually charges the external cap. Once that is charged, then you have the ability to use the energy that's stored in that cap to help in your output switches. So basically, you can utilize up to 400 milliamps of current on the output to drive your switches. That particular product, because it has the choice of temperature or overcurrent sensing capability, that's the 8-pin version. And then we go to what we call our full feature devices, which is our ISSI 3OR11H and 12H. And those are actually 16-pin devices. They contain two Miller clamps, one for if you're in an AC switching environment, you might need a Miller clamp for each one of your FETs because you'll need two output FETs. They both have the output capacitor for the fast turn on feature. And they also feature both current and temperature sensing. So it is our fully featured device. The only difference between the R11 and the R12H is the R11 uses an external PTC to monitor over temperature events, whereas the R12H uses our CoolMOS S7 T-Sense pin. So we actually have a MOSFET with an integrated temperature sense in the MOSFET itself. And you can directly tie that into the R12H to detect any over temperature situations. And then if either one of those are triggered, the overcurrent or over temperature, you go into a very fast shutdown mode. It'll shut down the MOSFET in less than 200 nanoseconds, for example. So, Daniel, what kind of applications would these new solid state isolators be a good fit for? <sighs> That's a great question. So, you know, we originally targeted industrial robotics, industrial programmable logic controllers, solid state relays, battery management systems, commercial HVAC, EV chargers, solid state circuit breakers, and thermostats. But what we've found, and we've actually worked with a lot of, you know, lead customers in each one of those applications. But what we found is that because of the broad capability and the smaller footprint, and the elimination of the heat sinks, we're actually finding our way into a lot of different applications. And I think this is where we need a lot of help in trying to, to do discovery to uncover these customers. So if you remember the slide where I talked about the amount of voltage and current and the amount of different types of switches that we can effectively utilize, it really brings a broad set of applications to our table. Okay. So if my audience is ready to get started using these new solid state isolators, do you guys have an eval kit to help them on their way? We actually do. And as a matter of fact, we've got multiple eval kits. So at the time of the recording, we actually have our two full featured evaluation boards available. These are the ISSI 3OR11 and 12H that I spoke about that have the dual Miller clamp as well as all the protection on chip. Those give customers the ability to really design and evaluate all the features of the product. What is coming next will be the three additional 8-pin eval boards specifically to help design in with the 8-pin devices. They should be available by the time this video goes live. So everything should be in place by then. So five different eval boards that you can choose to do your evaluations. Excellent. Now, can you explain the differences between these different solutions a bit? How do they compare? I think the one thing to recognize is that all five variants are in 300 mil packages. So both the 8-pin and the 16-pin devices have the exact same isolation capability. So the isolation voltage of the Corlitz transformer meets UL5177 and IOC as well. So they have the exact same isolation voltage of 5K VRMS, 8,000 volt peak. 
The difference in the products, we have two 8-pin, which we would maybe call the lower feature set devices that are in a DSO-8 wide body package. They have the standard turn-on, so that energy capability is up to 175 microamps without the external cap. Gives you the ability to have either Miller clamp with over temperature or overcurrent protection or no Miller clamp and both overcurrent and over temperature protection. And then we have our fast feature devices, one eight pin, which gives you over temperature or overcurrent along with that fast turn on feature up to 400 milliamps. And then the two remaining full feature devices that give you access to all of the capability of the devices, the two Miller clamps, the overcurrent and over temperature protection as well as if you want to use the CoolMOS S7T Sense, that's a direct connection for our ISSI 30R12H. So a pretty broad spectrum that we've tried to cover to meet the specific needs of our customers and their particular applications. Excellent. Okay, so before we go, Daniel, can you recap your main points for me? Yeah, sure. So the Infineon Solid State Isolator family will give our customers faster and more reliable switching, a reduced total cost of ownership, very robust protection features that are integrated into the products themselves. You don't need external components to realize those other than the cap. They operate with Infineon's broad switch portfolio. It's an enhanced solid state solution favoring replacement of mechanical solutions. And for more information, you can either go to infineon.com slash ISSI or infineon.com slash SSR. Uh, to get more information, data sheets, and et cetera. Fantastic. Well, Daniel, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to represent the Infineon team and uh, very excited about this product family. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.